Hey everybody, it's Neil from Heaviosity, just here to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's really easy. Just push the button. It's red. It says subscribe. Press it. Do it. Whoops. Hey, this is Neil. Welcome back. This is another edition of Two Hour Cues, and today we're going to learn how to be a hero. You say, what? So I wrote a track with kind of a hero theme in mind, and I wanted to go through that and talk about my process, how I developed this, what I did. I'm just going to jump right in and play parts of it and then discuss what I was thinking how it resonates in the track, what things are supporting it. That's enough talking. Let's go. All right, cool. So one of the big things here is Two Hour Cues wrote this melody, the idea, and roughly orchestrated some parts in a couple of hours. I'm not the greatest orchestrator, and I don't spend a lot of time, you know, doing orchestra tracks. So for me, I had to spend more time experimenting, getting things to work. But we'll forget about that for a moment and kind of focus on what's happening here. One of my favorite parts is the end where the melody kind of comes back. So you have the French horns playing this line. And then that just fades out. And at the same time, you've got the tenor bones supporting that. To me, that was the most important part of this, was getting a melody that I liked. I was like, oh, not an easy thing sometimes. So once that was happening, kind of building a piece around it was, was easier. When I was sort of finished or thought I was finished, I had an intro and it was kind of just murky and then it started around bar 13. So there was kind of a murky thing brewing and then it went ba -da, ba -da, and built and built and built into the big section and then there you go. So I, after the fact, took the melody that was working and liked and I figured I'd introduce it in the beginning kind of as a subdued kind of lower key version of itself.
what I have going on there is I chose to use the tenor trombones and leave the French horns to pick up some of the melodic stuff happening in the next section, so. Similar to the end, just modulated. And right here, actually key switched to short notes, which you can do in a lot of products. So if you go here to your tenor bones, let's see which channel is playing this. See, I'm on longs, and then those two notes, it jumps to staccato. Sounds a little more realistic. So one more time. Those two notes are back to legato. So what else is going on here just for mood? So there's this loop designer. It's just kind of a murky loop thing happening and it slowly fades in as you can see with the volume here. So you got some ambient juice going on. There's that and the bass bones. Just kind of holding down the fort with some low notes here. Cellos and basses. So there's the cello and the bass. Just subtle kind of underpinning under the melody. We've got booms. What's a track without a good subtle boom underneath? So with the track playing. Okay, so then what happens? It starts to move. We kind of pull out of that intro, you know, subdued vibe of, of the hero theme. All right, so that dun, 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 that's happening in the horns and the helicopters above. So we have. So those are just French horns sustained. So the energy's building a little bit. Um, we have more motion. There's some rhythm that's happening. I like to try to find stuff. When I say stuff, I'm talking about rhythm elements that to me, they're new. And sometimes it's looking through our products or whatever product you might choose and say, oh, that's a, I'm not always gonna use the same big bass drum and reverb or some, you know, ensemble thing. So in this case, um, using some low drums. Let's go there. So a little trick here was I took the attack and went way up. So it's more kind of a versus it's kind of a neat distant hit that's occurring. bass and the cello are just kind of you know holding out we've got the french horn going from this intro melody it's subdued and then how do we get into the next section where the energy starts to come up so these are the elements that i use to make that happen so let's play through that into the next section and we can take a look at what's going on
stop there, a number of things happening. So I wanted to get some energy going. I wanted to stick to more traditional instruments. So let's, let's uh, open up the spiccato violin. And that's mixed with cello, short notes or spiccato notes. So let's take a look at those two parts together. So, how did I do that? I don't remember. So I started with a simple line, just the violins playing short notes. And I think I found a mistake, but we'll come back to that later. This is kind of chugging along and it's working with the melody. So if we just start to piece things together, like the violin spiccatos before we touch the cellos, because it makes it a little more complex with the two. Let's put in the, the horns. So there's like a skeletal version of you know, your main melody happening and this kind of like chugging along rhythm that is happening from the short string notes. If we put the cello in, so immediately you can hear that it's anchoring kind of the bass or the chordal movement, uh, the cello that is. And then we have other stuff happening the tubas. Let's see what's going on here. Let's crack this open. Ooh. Interesting. So we're starting to get a better picture. So tubas are basically just playing long bass notes. There's a little tension happening here. Thought that was kind of a, a fun flavor. So it goes, the bass movement is going down to a D sharp here and it kind of, it starts to feel, I don't know, again, music being kind of an emotional thing while I'm writing, I'm not thinking this is this chord, this is this chord. I'm kind of playing around with melody and what supports it, what's happening rhythmically. Um, that's just the way my brain works. Again, being a guitar player, playing in hard rock bands. Yes, I went to music school, but I said this earlier, I'm not a trained arranger. I don't understand all of the exact uh, ranges for each instrument and what might sound better. Once in a while, I'll, I'll bounce this off of uh, Dave and Ari and they may have some suggestions and they would say, oh, you have the tubas way too high. So some of it is trial and error for me mixed with, you know, listening to other scores and either being inspired or understanding what's happening in those scores. It's about what do they do to create this vibe that I really like. Wow, there's so much power there. And that's often how I work. Let's get out of this tuba section and see what else is going on. We have bass bones. So you have most of the picture there. Uh, there's also tenor bones playing. There's a lot of parts going on here. Which is reinforcing what's happening with the French horns. This is just the French horns playing. Which is a, a very lyrical orchestra horn instrument often used in, by everybody. Um, if you add the tenor trombones into it,
there's just like a synergy they kind of glue together really nicely even though they're playing unison in that case um i have other things that we've already gone through that are filling out some of the harmonic content um again the bass bones the tuba you know that's kind of the whole picture in this section and then obviously chiseling away are the short strings that mixed with the tuba and the bass bones are giving you this kind of chordal sense of what's happening. Uh, maybe if we listen to it without the, the horn melodies. So yeah, there is a lot going on, and it took a while to kind of piece all those things together. The last piece in this section that is moving stuff along is percussion. And you know, I didn't go crazy bang you over the head trailer track kind of percussion, which I normally would go for. I have a bunch of stuff loaded in. So you can see we have uh, hits, breakout, one, that's really just big sub hits, and then Sounds like kind of brushes on drums. It's not, you know, huge hits. And the section is really just kind of a mid-level, you know, we're not on 10, we're on like five and a half here. So I'll show you what that is. Here we go. It's uh, Studio Armageddon Ensemble. And if you click on, if you click on that, it's, those drums played lightly. What else is happening rhythmically? In this section, we have some gongs. So I think the downbeat I hit with the big which kind of, it gives you this impact, not a really harsh one, but almost like this stereo envelope kind of thing with the gong hit. And then it's tapping away on it. Again, the whole rhythmic component is. And you're gonna hear it build up because we're going to another section. So now we're in the next section. Hits are harder, there's more motion. I'm hearing some metals. Cool, so let's listen to that whole section. Might be a little piratey. I didn't want to go for piratey, but I'll be the first to say it. There's a little piratey vibe in there. Let's just go with what we got. So things kind of get pushed up another level. We're building towards the peak energy wise. I started bringing in, so how do you go louder? How do you go bigger? You know, there's more motion. Part of that was bringing the trumpets in and they're kind of ghosting the melody. It's bringing everything up just a bit more emotion, excitement, all that good stuff. The horns. If you add the trumpets in, you'll hear that kind of texture. And below that is the tenor, uh, the tenor trombones. We've got some bass bones that are playing staccato. The 
that's adding some motion to this whole thing um, and some, you know, of the low end happening. We have sustained tubas. Cool. All right, so there's a lot of the picture there. Clearly there's a lot going on here. It gets harder to mix when you have a lot of stuff going on. Um, just to add in a few thoughts about this, like I wouldn't consider this piece done, but considering the series is two hour cues, I didn't want to spend days and days working on something, you know, to get it where I was like, this is finished and I love it and I want to release it. I wanted to get enough so it was presentable and you could hear what was going on and understand some of the decisions that I made as we're going through, but not, you know, finesse every part to perfection. And if we say focus on some of the other instruments. So here, I like, I really like that. I like short strings doing this kind of neoclassical stuff. So the violins. Okay. And that is supported by the violas. And to get these kind of, you know, parts to sound somewhat realistic, given that it's MIDI, you know, dynamics plays a huge part of this. So adding that in, you can see I'm in Cubase, you know, the, the height of the note here shows accents, the higher, the louder. So if I were to finesse this, I might actually just go and say, maybe let's uh, hit some of these first notes a little harder. Maybe that's too much. Maybe that needs a little more. It's almost cool to experiment with, maybe I don't accent the first note, but the second. Like I heard that here and I like it. Gonna change it up. Let's check that out against again the viola spiccatos. And one more part, cellos. Let's just hear the cellos. So that tells a lot of the story, actually, um, and it may tell a little bit too much. What do I mean by that? It's really thick. I like it. I love cellos. They're really playing tight, and you feel this, this chord motion happening. And the dynamics. Dynamics are a huge part of getting this to sound more realistic, again, because it is uh, sampled instruments. So the three together. So that's the bed, you've heard it four or five times. If you put the melody in over it, you'll see how that starts to work. And I'll just put the French horns in. The 
The second section is an extension of the first part, building. So you hear the melody develop, and then there's still the same energy, the chord movement, and I'm further developing the melody, so it's not just loop and repeat the second time. That gets a bit boring. You want it to kind of tell a story and go somewhere, and how do you do that? Right, so that phrase is part of the main body of the piece. There's a little bit of a, of a pause there before it starts up again, where the build... Dun, dun, bim, 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 bim. Melody's back in. So in a way, it's, it's kind of an answer to the first part of the melody. So let's go back and listen to that. So the melody is clearly changing up in the second section, but what's happening with the rest of the orchestra here is we've got kind of a repeat of the rhythm section in the chord movement. The second half, I'm trying to say, all right, you got, you got this. I understand what's happening in the first movement of this section. Uh, there's a melody developed. We've heard this melody before. The melody is going to support what's happening Rhythmically, it's just not like a drone low note occurring and the melody is telling the entire story It's kind of working together to do that and that happens through you know starting with a melody Figuring out what is happening underneath Quarterly whether it's a bass part or in this case, it's low brass um, more so in this case it's short strings like the cello and the violin and in um, the viola playing spiccato kind of outline what's happening rhythmically and harmonically so if we listen to this section again <laughs> jump ahead again it's doing the same thing what the difference here is that's really making a difference is I think the change up in the melody um, to kind of bring this to yet another level So the other thing that's happening, and this is pretty complex, there's a lot going on obviously, I start to bring in these staccato trumpets. So you have so this. So that's kind of pushing things in a bigger way just feels like there's more energy and that was just a decision that I made in this piece to try to click it up a notch. Um, all this stuff's happening and percolating in the rhythm, it's repeating for a second time instead of repeating the horns like we discussed. Um, they start to support the rhythm and the chordal movement and then I'm thinking, oh, I want to just push it up one more notch. How am I going to do that? I'm using these trumpets and they're not really starting a new melody. They're just kind of pointing out sections and outlining kind of the chords in a way that feels like there's more energy happening and more excitement to the piece. <laughs> to the, the melody coming back. And 
and I chose not to resolve it to the final boom, boom. Kind of leaves you hanging in a way. It felt more, I don't know, hero-y, superhero -y. And again, restating the melody and starting off with the melody reinforces that whole theme. Um, so if we go back to the beginning and kind of, since we've talked through a lot of these parts, what they're doing, not in great detail, but hopefully you're getting a sense of how the pieces are working together. Listening through again with all these things that we've just kind of investigated, let's see what it sounds like. So I'm gonna stop it there and just talk about the end where we bring the melody back. Instead of coming back with the trumpets playing, the horns playing, the tenor bones playing, I wanted to select stuff that spoke really well, especially when they're kind of naked. Part of that is it sounds cool, and the other part is working with MIDI and samples, even if there are these great sounding samples. I do happen to like these unbiased. It's the stuff that we recorded for Forzo. They sound really nice, but you want to pick things, say in your library, certain instruments sound better than others. You sometimes have to sacrifice and make a decision about like, oh man, these trumpets sound like complete, ugh, like fake, bad, whatever. It's just, you avoid it and you can use something else to get the same point across. So here the horns sound great and I'm going to use those. So on the last two chords, I just supported. And you see I'm using the mod wheel and it opens up the sound of the bell. There's more bell to it. There's more rasp in the instrument, which they would normally blow harder and then lay off less breath to make the instrument speak in a different timbre or a softer timbre. And the same thing is happening with the tenor bones. And together. And on the bottom, we have bass bones. We even have a tuba. It's not a tuba. That's a really nice fullness on the bottom. Uh, so that is a quick overview of what's going on. There are some other little textural things happening. Like I said, I probably would go in and start to pick and choose parts that are too thick, you know, so it just doesn't sound so almost overloaded with, okay, everybody is playing this note at this time, it's unnecessary, but in, you know, the scope of writing this and trying to keep it within a reasonable amount of time, I didn't do that. Rhythmically on the end. So this is the last section. It's pretty much full guns. So again, with those lower strings playing ching, 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 with the rhythm, it adds that tightness. 
put the uh, tuba short notes in, which we'll pick up here. And the bass bone staccatos. Oh yes, the big boom and the gong. So a transitional element out of this big fanfare happening. Again, you're hearing that here. And then the melody. So that is the piece. I have not named it yet. Give me some ideas. Put it in the comments. Anyway, again, thank you for joining me for our second episode of Two Hour Cues. Hopefully you got something out of this that you can take into your own studio and work on with your writing. Hopefully it's uh, some information that kind of opens your eyes to some other techniques, some other ideas, and peels back a few of the layers about how to orchestrate when you don't have a ton of experience, um, choices about melody, um, and all the other stuff that we discussed. So again, thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.